Hello everyone, I am Dr. Moshmi Das. Currently, I am in my first year of residency in ENT. Today, I am starting this channel called the ENT Resident for all the ENT postgraduates out there as well as those MBBS students who are preparing for the postgraduate examinations. I will be mostly addressing ENT topics starting from anatomy, physiology and slowly I will be moving on to diseases, their management options, etc. Now without waiting further, let's start with our first topic. Our first topic is anatomy of pharynx. So under anatomy of pharynx, these are the topics that I'll be covering. I'll be starting with a basic introduction to the pharynx, followed by describing its layers. Next I'll be heading on to the different parts of pharynx and I'll be describing the structures in great details. Next, I'll be going into Waldia's ring and describe its components, mainly the palatine tonsil and the adenoids in details. Next will be about the muscles of pharynx. And lastly, I'll be ending with blood supply, nerve supply and the lymphatic drainage of pharynx. Hi everyone, in this first video, I'm going to be talking about an introduction to the anatomy of pharynx. Now, what is pharynx? It is a long musculofacial tube. It is shaped in the form of an inverted cone. It is important to know the dimensions of pharynx. It is about 12 to 14 centimeter long. Now when we come to width, we have to know that it is not uniform throughout the length of the pharynx. It is variable at different locations. As we see in this picture, first of all, this is the upper limit of the pharynx, which is the skull base. This is formed by two structures. This first structure is known as the basi occiput and the second structure is known as the basi spinoid. Now both of these structures together they are forming the skull base which is the level of the upper limit of the pharynx. At this level pharynx is about 3.5 centimeter in width which is the widest part of the pharynx. Now coming to the narrowest part of the pharynx, which is this level, the level of the lower limit of the pharynx, which is at the level of the cricoid cartilage, also corresponding to the sixth cervical vertebra. At this level, we call it the pharyngoesophageal junction. Now this level is the level at which pharynx is the narrowest which is about 1.5 cm. Thus if we summarize the pharynx is the widest at the upper limit of, it, of the pharynx which is the skull base that is about 3.5 cm and it is narrowest at its lower limit which is the pharyngoesophageal junction which is about 1.5 cm. Next talking about the extent as I already showed you. It extends from the pharyngeal tubercle which lies at the skull base and it continues up to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage where it continues further into another structure known as the esophagus. Next coming to the functions of pharynx. Pharynx is a continuation of the common pathway of two very essential functions of the human being which is respiration and digestion. Now first coming to respiration, as we all know the respiration uh, while respiring the air enters through the nas nasal cavity, it continues into the nasopharynx and it comes down through the laryngeal inlet, enters the larynx and goes further into the trachea and bronchi. This is the pathway of the respiratory tract. Thus pharynx is forming as a part of this common pathway. Second of all, coming to the digestive tract, the digestive tract which begins in the oral cavity goes through the oropharynx, continues down to the rest of the pharynx to continue into the esophagus. This pharynx is forming a conduit for passing food into the digestive tract. Third function is via the auditory tube which is also known as the eustachian tube or the pharyngotympanic tube, it is helping in equalization of pressure within the middle ear. And last of all, it aids in vocalization of speech to facilitate speech. These are the four functions of pharynx. Next we come to the structure of the pharyngeal wall. 
this pharyngeal wall is composed of five layers now if we see from deep to superficial these layers are the mucosal layer the submucosal layer the pharyngobasilar fascia the muscular layer and the buccopharyngeal fascia now first of all let's look at the mucosal layer this mucosal layer is lining the entire pharyngeal cavity and it is continuous with the mucous membrane of all the adjacent structure which is continuous with the pharynx which are the eustachian tube the nasal cavities the oral cavity the larynx the esophagus now it is very fascinating here to know that the pharynx is not lined by a single epithelium it has different epithelium in different locations mostly the mucosa of the nasopharynx is the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium which is the respiratory epithelium as in continuation from the nasal cavity whereas the rest of the pharynx is lined by a non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and this change in epithelium is occurring at the transitional zone which is located at the lower end of the pharynx coming to the next layer is the submucosal layer it is the layer which lies beneath the mucosa and also known as the lamina propria it is made up of connective tissue containing elastic tissue it contains aggregates of gut associated lymphoid tissue that forms the waldeyer's ring now this waldeyer's ring is a very important structure it is an aggregate of lymphoid tissue which is located in the entrance of the aero digestive tract which is helping in the local immunity of the individual i'll be talking about the waldeyer's ring and its structure in a separate video now this submucosal layer is a very thick layer and it blends with the next layer which is known as the pharyngobasilar fascia the pharyngobasilar fascia is also known as a pharyngeal aponeurosis this layer is adherent to the skull base in the region of the occipital bone and the petrous temporal bone now this layer has an actual importance over here now in this figure we see that this first layer that you can see is the mucosal layer the second layer that you are here seeing the line by yellow is the one which we are saying is the pharyngobasilar fascia now this layer it begins at the base of the skull why is this layer important we'll see is that the next layer which is the muscular layer the muscular layer is not continuous throughout the length of the pharynx it is deficient at the upper limit of the pharynx which is near the base of the skull thus what is happening here is the fact that pharyngobasilar fascia has to be very thick over here in this particular region so as to maintain the integrity of the pharynx because this muscular layer is not able to reach the skull base this is the importance of the pharyngobasilar fascia next when we come down to the third layer which is the muscular layer now as in most structures of the digestive tract we have seen that muscular layer consists of two layers of muscles the first is the external layer of muscle which has the superior the middle and the inferior constrictor muscles they interlock like three cones with each layer overlapping the next layer now the third, second layer is the internal layer which consists of the stylopharynges the salpingopharynges and the palatopharynges i'll be talking much in depth about the muscles of pharynx in another video coming to the last layer of pharynx this is known as the buccopharyngeal fascia which is basically nothing but loose areolar sheath this layer the blue layer is the one which is the buccopharyngeal fascia this layer is a very thin areolar layer covering the pharyngeal constrictors and is continuous anteriorly with the covering of the buccinator muscle now why is this layer important it contains the pharyngeal plexus of veins and nerves thus if we summarize now the different layers of the pharynx is first the mucosal layer which is different in different locations the nasopharynx is lined by the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium whereas the rest of the pharynx namely the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx is lined by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium next is the submucosal layer which contains a very important structure known as the waldeyer's ring which is an aggregate of lymphoid tissue 
The next layer is the pharyngobasilar fascia. I already told you about the importance of it. The fourth layer is the muscular layer and the last one is the buccopharyngeal fascia containing the pharyngeal plexus of veins and nerves. Coming to the next part is the different parts of the pharynx. Now how do we divide pharynx? It is divided on the basis of which structure it communicates with anteriorly. So on the basis of that we divide pharynx into three parts namely the nasopharynx, the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx. Now coming to first nasopharynx. Nasopharynx is that part of the pharynx which is particularly this region, this particular region which is communicating through the kuana over here anteriorly with the nasal cavity. Hence it is known as the nasopharynx. The second part of the pharynx which is the oropharynx, this particular region, it communicates anteriorly through the oropharyngeal isthmus with the oral cavity. Hence it has been called as oropharynx. And the last part of the pharynx is the laryngopharynx which is this particular region of the pharynx which is communicating with the larynx anteriorly through the laryngeal inlet. Thus the three parts of the pharynx are the nasopharynx, the oropharynx and the laryngopharynx. Now I'll be talking about the rest of the topics in th from the next video onwards. If you have liked my video kindly press the like button down and share with your friends if you have enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you have any query you can put it down in the comment section and I will address to you as soon as possible. Subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I am uploading my new videos. Thank you.